$69.99. I got the shipping covered. What are you waiting for? Just go to katedelaneyradio.com, click on books and special offer today. KCAA Loma Linda. Listen on 1050 AM, 102.3 FM, and 106.5 FM. Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV mobile studio. That's AAMP TV. Today's show is brought to you by Legal Shield, providing legal protection and peace of mind. Legal Shield can help with traffic tickets, texting and driving, DUIs, court appearances, estate planning, even contracts given to people they don't understand, plus a whole lot more. For more information, contact Legal Shield at 213-245-1305. That's 213-245-1305. Or check them out online for more information at no court. .us. And a big welcome in to everybody listening in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from Coast to Coast, Magic 97.9 FM right here in Las Vegas. Everybody else on Comcast, Cox Spectrum, Frontier, Wow Cable, Facebook, Instagram, and Hotel Television in 650,000 rooms from coast to coast, if you know what I mean. Everybody watching on TV, you see what I'm saying? And you know where I'm at. I'm right here in front of Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. And we have a very special guest today. As a matter of fact, let's let let him introduce himself. Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm Dwight Hicks, former Super Bowl champion with the San Francisco 49ers. And that would be two-time Super Bowl champion, from the San Francisco 49ers. Yes. <laughs> We're on the 49ers radio network over in Honolulu on KHKA CBS Sports 1500. So this one's a special show for everybody over there as well. You know, we've had quite a few 49ers on. Got to tell you, Dwight, every time they come on, they're smart guys. They're <laughs> Conscientious guys. I mean, seriously. Look, we've had them on from everybody. But this is the one organization that it just seems like the organization has raised the bar a little bit, and we have a little bit more intellect, a little bit better dialogue, and and a lot more life experience. I can't explain it, but I'm just going to keep eating the popcorn because the popcorn (laughs) tastes pretty good. Well, I I don't know if there's any truth to that. I do know that they like to – really talk to people, players, before they draft them or really interested in signing them because they want to see what kind of guys they are because they're going to be part of the franchise and part of that family, and they want to ensure that there's going to be a certain type of guy that fits right into their scheme of things, whether it's on the field or off the field. Well, you know, it's it's interesting. We had a conversation a couple of weeks ago. I think you had said if you want to – I believe it was you – don't hold me to it if I'm wrong, but it was you had said if you ever want to know how the how good an organization is, then look at how they treat their alums. Did you not tell me that? Absolutely, and uh, you can go down the line and uh, to any franchise, and you can see how the guys are doing. What do they say about them? And uh, the NFL is part of that too. I think that's where it should really start, not just the franchises, because the Franchises are part of the NFL. And I think that they should be treating former players who made the game great uh, just as well as the guys who are making the money now. Because had it not been for those guys to lay the foundation, there would be no NFL as it is today. Right. And, you know, if you look at some of these and you scratch your head with some of these clubs and you say, all right, there's a culture in Every locker room. Uh, You've played for a couple of different clubs, even in Canada, right? And there's a culture in every locker room. Then you go back to college and you say there was a particular culture here as well. 
So maybe some collegiate cultures are better fits with certain pro cultures in the locker room. Would you agree or disagree? Uh, there's, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that because uh, it starts from somewhere. And I know that uh, I, I think it really starts from your upbringing. And then your experiences and your coaching and the attitudes of the coaches as you're playing Pop Warner, as you're playing high school, as you go to college, and then to the pros. So, um, yeah, I, I've been like this all my life. I never really wanted to hurt anybody on the football field because, let's face it, the risk of injury is 100%. It's just a matter to what degree. And those guys are out there trying to make a livelihood for their family. So I wanted to hit you hard. I wanted to let you know that I was there. But by no means was I trying to maim someone in the uh, right. effort to win. Yeah, and there's a fine line with that. Look, the, from the fans' point of view, they want to see hard-hitting, hard-hitting. But, you know, Dwight, when you played versus what we see today, they say, well, the speed of the game is a little bit more today. But the hitting is less today, too. The risk is a little bit less because look at your protective gear from back when you played versus today's game. Today's game, I mean, you basically have pillows around the players and you have referees saying, oh, no, no, that's uh, that's roughing or whatever. Yes. Somebody was just, there's a tap on a shoulder. Oh, no, that we're going to throw a flag for that. I mean, here when you're hitting or Ronnie Lott is hitting. The whole world felt it through their television or through the stadium, and you could hear it ring through the stadium. Or even a guy that you guys played against, and that would be a guy by the name of Doug Plank. And yeah. Doug Plank hit very hard, right. right? And, you know, it's funny. Doug's a friend of mine, and Doug said, look, whatever got in my way, I warned my teammates, just get out of the way. I'm going to hit anything that's moving in front of me. And I think that's a fair <laughs> statement, wouldn't you? Yeah, and uh, Ronnie was like that, too. Um, yep. Uh, he would just get, like, just narrow vision on his target. And if you came in that scope, he'd hit you, too. And uh, unfortunately, you know, or I should say fortunately, most time he hit the target. But when sometimes he hit you, you're like, what the hell are you doing, man? Open your eyes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it is a violent game. And I think that the league is trying to uh, make the game safer because these guys are bigger and faster. However, um, when you have 22 guys running around in all different directions, full speed, uh, accidents are going to happen. Injuries are going to happen. It is a violent sport. And there's no way to make it safe. They're making these rules under the guise to make the game safe. It is not a safe game. Somebody said that uh, um, that football is a game of um, uh, inches and it's a contact sport. No, football is a collision sport. And the more collisions, the harder the collisions, the more that the your opponents will fear you. And again, I'd never tried to hurt anyone but I wanted to let them know when they looked up that I was there. Right. 22 is right in your face. Oh, and by the way, folks, big welcome back to everybody just tuning in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliate here with two-time Super Bowl champion from the San Francisco 49ers. That'd be Dwight Hicks. So, Dwight, let's think about the speed of the game and let's think about protective gear. But then let's go back to the speed of your game. Look, your game was not slow. For some reason, people think when – in your era when you played, for some reason people think that people weren't fast and they didn't hit hard. I mean, it's sort of a rude awakening for them because the reality is, look, the game was fast. and Look, your guys were just as fast, but they hit harder because they knew they can hit harder. So I would argue the game was more dangerous then, and I think it's a softer version of the game today. Is that fair to say? Uh, it's a fair assessment. I mean, I, I look at uh, Joe Montana and the way that he's walking around. He can't stand in one place for a long time, and he can't sit down for a long time because he had been hit countless times, and there was no protecting the quarterback. The quarterback was just like any other player. And they talk about, oh, well, you know, this uh, a, a runner is uh, – is, or a receiver is now a ball carrier. 
I'm trying to tell you, if you're a defensive back and you're running around chasing a receiver all day, when you get a chance to lay him out, you want to lay him out because it, <laughs> it levels the playing field. And I'm telling you that the game is just as fast when I play th than it is today. I think that people, I think the players are more technically sound in the way they hit and the way they tackle than they are today. Sometimes I think uh, some of these rules are hurting the defense because I'm t if a running back upon contact is going to lower his body, I was always taught that the lowest guy wins. You get low to get leverage, to hit up and the rise in the target. And if you're not getting your body low to hit, make contact, you're going to get run over. So, you know, that, that rule about no head-to-head -head contact, you know, helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, yeah, I, I don't like that at all. Well, the problem is, Dwight, the refs are so arbitrarily correct. They could say, well, you know, we're going to go to the replay booth in New York, and we're going to see if that was targeting. Now, I saw a call about this in a recent game, something similar, and it was incidental helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. We'll come back at the end of the break mm -hmm. with this. But it seemed to me that there should be an intentional foul for a, a targeting for for real for a real spearing shot, yes. right? But then incidental contact, it just kind of happens. And folks, it's a part of the game. If you don't like it, then don't watch it. But this is a gladiator game. There are guys out there doing it because they love to do it. And sometimes people get hurt, just like when you're driving. Maybe you're driving fast. Sometimes accidents happen. Well, guess what? It happens on the field, too. We're going to be back here with two-time Super Bowl champion Dwight Hicks from the San Francisco 49ers in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. Lots more to come here on The Circus. <laughs> wants to get ripped off, broken into, or robbed, but nobody wants to pay a lot of money to have their home protected either. I've got an offer to tell you about to provide home security for your home for less than a dollar a day. For real, with no installation or equipment charges. And this is from a company rated number one by a leading consumer research company. According to the facts, most of you won't even call unless there's a burglary in your neighborhood or something bad happened. So let's give you a reason. Save money. For less than a dollar a day with no other costs, you can get your home secured. Plus, get a lifetime equipment replacement warranty. You need protection for your home. Call the Home Security Hotline right now. 800-361-3491. 800-361-3491. Again, that's 800 800-361-3491. Three six one thirty four ninety one. AMP, the multi-format network, is here to help create, produce, distribute, and sell your content. For more information, send a message to info at aamp.tv. That's info at aamp.tv. Are you a small business owner or pursuing the dream of starting your own company? Do you know where to start or how to grow that existing business? The American Business Trust Company has the answers you need. The American Business Trust Company can help you with startup capital, business strategy, sales and marketing, and establishing your company with a physical location or on the internet. You decide. You bring the idea. The American Business Trust Company can help with the rest. For a free evaluation, you may visit them online at abtrustco.com. That's A-B-T-R-U-S-T-C-O.com. Or call them at 657-600-1876. That's the American Business Trust Company, 657-600-1876. Call them today. They can help your business right away. Come on. You watch the news. Be prepared to pay more taxes. Then if you owe back taxes or haven't filed in a few years, get ready. The IRS, the largest collection agency in the world, will be coming after you. With the power to collect taxes by any means they want to. Hey, they can freeze your bank account, your passport, even padlock your business. Oh, <laughs> good times. Look, if the IRS claims you owe them 5000 or more in back taxes and they're coming after you, don't panic. Call my friends at Get a Tax Lawyer first. Their job is to negotiate with the IRS and save you money. 
They're experts at it. That's all they do. And you can trust them. In some cases, they have reduced a $50,000 tax bill to less than $1,000. If you owe the IRS $5,000 or more in back taxes, call now for a free consultation. 800-908-7016. 800-908-7016. That's 800-908-7016. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Stout, live from Las Vegas in the Amp TV mobile studio. That's Double AMP TV. This segment brought to you in part by Cali Vegas, helping people create and host their very own radio, TV, or multimedia talk show. Cali Vegas can help with everything they need to get out of sitting in hours of traffic, commuting back and forth the same old boring job, and host their very own talk show in their very own home studio. For more information, contact Cali Vegas at 949 445 1119. That's 949 445 1119. Again, 949 449- 445-1119 or check them out online for more information at www.kellyvegas.com that's C-A-L-I Vegas.com And a big welcome back to everybody listening in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast, including our friends over in Honolulu on the 49ers Radio Network also the New York Yankees Radio Network and the Alabama Crimson Tide Radio Network, KHKA, CBS Sports 1500 over in Los Angeles, NBC News, CNBC Financial, KCAA right here in Las Vegas, Magic 97.9 FM, over in Faraday, Louisiana, Natchez, Mississippi, 107.1 The River, Mid-South Broadcasting, down in Corpus Christi, Texas. Big hello to our friends at CBS Sports, KSIX, and that's home of the Astros, Texans, and Rockets, and as well as home of the Atlanta Braves, WAUD in Auburn, Alabama, WDJY in Atlanta, and everybody else from coast to coast on television in hotels, on hotel television, right? Over a half a million rooms. We're back here with two-time Super Bowl champion from the San Francisco 49ers. That would be Dwight Hicks. All right. And Dwight, in the last segment, I'm going to let you pick up where you left off so we can go ahead and chop that up a little bit. Well, you know, I, I just feel that, you know, the game isn't safe and uh, they're trying to make it safer by changing the rules. And as I was saying, Joe Montana could barely sit down for any length of time or stand up for any length of time because he got hit hard. He was considered just a player on the field. Now they're uh, protecting the quarterback so much that, you know, you, you can't touch him. It's, it's like then you're taking that out of football. This is part of the game. If you play, it's a violent game. Something's going to happen. Uh, and if you don't want to play, that's fine too. But if you step in between those lines, you know, you can't protect one player over another player. It's football. You know what makes me laugh is, uh, better yet, what, what really irritates me, and it sort of makes me laugh a little bit, is the fact that they say, well, Joe Montana wasn't the best quarterback of all time, or John Elway wasn't, or whatever, whatever. Quarterbacks that played at that time, right? And you say, look, those guys, boy, did they take a beating. And I mean, they took a beating. And yes, they could hurl the ball 50, 60, 70 yards downfield, whatever. But the fact is, the game was so much more physical at that time. I think you and I would both agree with this. For me as a fan and growing up watching this, I want to see guys get a hit because – I'm on TV. I, I watch what's going on on TV. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter, man. I'm not feeling a thing. I'm just chewing the popcorn up, right? right? But the guys today, and I have to say this. Oh, you know, you you tap them. Oh, sorry, that's roughing the passer. Yeah. What kind of garbage is that? Uh, it's it's football, like I said, and uh, it's not football, it, Dwight. Come on, man. Well, well I'm saying it's football. football. That's not football. I'm saying the game is football. And it's hit or be hit. I mean, put it this way. Do people go to NASCAR to see who's going to win? Or people go to NASCAR to see these uh, these crashes? Absolutely. I mean, let's wait. I, I mean, I mean I, the skill of the drivers, tremendous. I mean, these guys have balls of steel. 
to go around the track than the Indy guys over 200 miles an hour with all these cars on the track. They're paid a lot of money to do that, okay? And if you don't do it, if you can't uh, compete, if you can't go to the limit with that car and driver, then you shouldn't be in the race. I remember going to an Indy, uh, uh, um, the 500, when the 500 was in Indianapolis, when I was there, I should say. And uh, I went down to the uh, pit, and the lead mechanic was talking to his driver and had just sent him out. And he was kind of yelling. I said, what did you say to him? He said, I said to him, there's nothing wrong with the car. Drive the car or get out of the race. And I said, why'd you say that to him? He said, well, he kind of had a near miss against the wall, near the wall, and it scared him. And he came in and I told him, what's wrong? And he told me, I said, look, drive the car. Drive the car, there's nothing wrong with the car. Drive it to the limit or get out of the race. And in football, it's the same thing. If you're gonna play, play. Don't be making these rules to try to make this game something that it's not. Right. And I think it's that softness is one aspect. But, you know, Dwight, there's also the gambling aspect. You know, it is what it is, folks. You got to realize, I mean, right here in Las Vegas, we have now the Las Vegas Raiders, which there's some people on the fence. And for years and years and years, Dwight, this has been and it, and it still is and it always will be because for 30 odd years we had the Denver Broncos on television here. This is a Broncos town. I'm not a Broncos fan. I'm not a fan of any of those. But the fact is it's hard to convert a, a city. There's 2.2, 2.4 million people here in Las Vegas. It's hard to convert them from being a supportive of one club. Now you're – well, you're, you're taking in your enemy. And now, oh, by the way, now you're suddenly supporting me growing up in Chicago. It's like, hey, we're going to bring the Packers to town, right? <laughs> right? And the first thing you're going to get is a chorus of boos from 10 million people. They don't want the Packers here. Just like the Vegas did not want the Raiders. The real Las Vegans did not want the Raiders here. If any team, they wanted the lesser of two evils. They were happier having the Chargers here. And frankly, the Chargers probably would have done a hell of a lot better here than even though they're in a new stadium. But as I understand it, Kroenke did not want the Raiders in their stadium in L.A. What do you think about that? Well, I, I just feel that uh, I don't think teams should move. Uh, that much. I mean, even the 49ers move into Santa Clara. I think the 49ers had the San Francisco 49ers have enough fan base in and around the city. That's where the franchise was initiated. That's where they should play. But yes. let's face it. And the Raiders have enough fans in Oakland. But the owners, they, they want to build these humongous stadiums and they want the, the, the city, if the city doesn't pay for it, then, you know, I want to move my team. It's such an insult and a tragedy to the, to the fans that have supported their teams for so long. You know, the Raiders should be in, 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 in Oakland. The, the Denver Broncos are still in Denver, but they shouldn't have to move. San Diego, they shouldn't have to move. But the NFL and their owners are making so much money and uh, TV rights and all that that they feel that they have no loyalty to the city that they started in. And here all these fans have supported them for years and are diehards. And now you're going to up and move them somewhere else. I mean, I, I, I think it's sad for the city. Because, I mean, what's, what, what is in Oakland? There's not a lot. At least the people in Oakland, in that area, Bay Area, got to watch a team that they just followed for so many years. And it's a shame that they move on the whim of the owners just to make money. Well, think about this. So playing at Candlestick Park, you knew obviously about that, versus – Versus Levi Stadium, right? So the idea that you're playing on a field, yes, it's park dirt because guess what? It's a baseball, baseball. field as well. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, what was cool about that is the rainy games, the slop and the mud <laughs> and, you know, guys coming up with a face full of mud or, or turf or something like that. 
That's the old imagery that I grew up watching guys like you playing. And I loved it because to me, watching a big lineman come up with a face full of turf <laughs> was one of the best scenes you could ever see on television. <laughs> Absolutely. And that was our home field advantage. I mean, you know, that's how football was meant to be played. Football wasn't meant to be all pristine. And, and, and back in the 60s, when I started watching, all the fields were dirt. And you had to play in some stadiums who had baseball stadiums in their diamonds, and they would have to play on that sometimes all year. Sometimes they put the, uh, uh, put the side in after baseball season was over, but that was part of it. It's fall. It's cold. It's, it's inclement. But that was part of the game. But because of money, as we said before, TV, the commentators, they need to read the numbers on a guy's back. So it makes it easier for them. To hell with the, 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 the players blowing out their knees and having all these bad injuries from hitting hard AstroTurf. Oh, that doesn't matter. We just want it to be cleaner for television. And that's why the game has progressed the way it does. Right. And, and that's know, why teams move from city to city because it's about money. Right. And, you know, here in the last 30 seconds of the segment, the idea of watching a game that you can relate to as an audience member. Maybe you played backyard football. Every Come on, who didn't play backyard football? If you're watching this show, I promise you, you played backyard football. <laughs> no question. <laughs> and the people got dirty. It is what it is. But I'll tell you what didn't happen. What didn't happen is we didn't play on turf where our feet would stick in and then we'd move and then we'd tweak our MCL, or our ACL. And think about all the injuries. I want to get back to that when we come back from break. Here with two-time Super Bowl champion from the San Francisco 49ers, Dwight Hicks. Don't go anywhere. Lots more to come here on The Circus. Attention business owners, you and your customers are listening to this commercial right now. Face it, every business needs customers, even yours. The Sports Circus is a primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, NBC, CNBC, and Westwood One News affiliates, plus CBS, Fox, and NBC sports affiliates across North America with coverage from Hawaii to New York. Also, the Sports Circus is available to the 180 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, and the Sports Circus gets about 4 million website visitors per month, which could click through your website and bring sales. The Sports Sports Circus provides great content featuring celebrity guests from sports and entertainment to our audience every weekday, which your company could greatly benefit from by increasing your visibility, foot traffic, eyeballs to your website, and calls from potential customers. Call us right now at 702-799-9935. Again, 702-799-9935. Or email us at info at thesportscircus.com. That's info at thesportscircus.com. Drive your sales today by advertising with the Sports Circus. Nobody wants to get ripped off, broken into, or robbed, but nobody wants to pay a lot of money to have their home protected either. I've got an offer to tell you about to provide home security for your home for less than a dollar a day. For real, with no installation or equipment charges. And this is from a company rated number one by a leading consumer research company. According to the facts, most of you won't even call unless there's a burglary in your neighborhood or something bad happened. So let's give you a reason. Save money for less than a dollar a day with no other costs. You can get your home secured. Plus, get a lifetime equipment replacement warranty. You need protection for your home. Call the home security hotline right now. 800-361-3491. 800-361-3491. Again, that's 800 800- 361-3491. So, you want to be in show business. Do people tell you that you're really funny, you have a great personality, and you should have your own talk show? Many of us have been told that, but we don't know how to get started. It's easier than you think. Let the pros at Cali Vegas give you a free talent evaluation. Call 949 445 1119 and learn how quickly you can create, produce, and host your very own talk show. 
Imagine not having to sit in traffic every day, commuting back and forth to the same old boring job. Get started in television or radio today with your free talent evaluation from Cali Vegas. Call 949-445-1119 or visit them online at calivegas.com. Make your dream come true today and create your new career and learn how to become a television or radio star with the help of Cali Vegas. 949-445-1119. Call now. Hi, I'm Dwight Hicks, and welcome back to the circus. I'm with Sal, and we're just having a little chat about some football. And uh, uh -huh. we were just discussing before the break about the different stadiums and the 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 turf, and compared to the as the astro turf compared to the regular grass. And uh, back in the day, football was played in the fall. It was cold. It could be rainy. It could be soggy. Inclement weather, but that's when you know you're playing football. Uh, if it's raining, it doesn't matter. Baseball, if it's raining, eh, you know, they call up the game. Football, you play the game in the rain. You play the game in the mud. Now, because of big money and TV and they want it to be all pristine, they made this artificial turf. Well, first they started with AstroTurf, and that was really, really bad for the players. But now they have this still synthetic turf because they wanted to make the game clean and here we are. But uh, I liked it back in the day because a candlestick, when that fog rolled in, you knew that that was home field advantage. You wanted it to be cold. You wanted it to be a little inclement because people had to come to your, your field on your turf and play. Listen, man, I, I couldn't agree <laughs> more because let, let's think about, you remember this game about, I don't know, 19, whatever the hell it was? Remember the Fog Bowl? Remember the Fog game yeah, with yeah. the Bears and the Eagles? Yes. That was phenomenal. And I love the fact that the announcers could not make out where the ball was, who had the ball, because it was complete and utter chaos on the field. Yeah. But that's what it was like when we were kids playing ball, right? Absolutely. It didn't matter. Just watch the game. Enjoy it. Go get a, a an adult beverage. Go get an ice cold beer or, or a soda, whatever the hell you drink. It doesn't matter. Enjoy the show because you're probably not going to see one like this for another long time. That's part of that was part of the drama of it all. Who's got the ball? Jeez, how about in the in the snow and the the, the, the White House? Like, damn, where's yes. the ball? How, how do they play on that? It adds curiosity to the fans, even. You know, it does, and I I love that aspect. So when you take the team, so like you take the Oakland Raiders off of the dirt, and Libby Schaff, the mayor up there, but you know. Well, there's 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 a lot going on over there. Libby said, "Oh, this is a baseball town, right?" So they ship the Raiders off, wow. send them down here to Las Vegas, whatever. All right, Libby. And then what is she now? Libby is saying, "Oh, guess what? We don't want to spend the money for a new baseball stadium." But yet, you're a baseball stadium or a baseball uh, city first. If that's the case, it seems like the Oakland A's are going to come down here and likely build a stadium on the site of the Rio Hotel and Casino. Essentially, uh, over my shoulder here in a little bit that direction. Everybody on TV can see this. Everybody watching on Comcast Cox Spectrum, Frontier mm -hmm. Wild Cable, and also in Hotel from Coast to Coast as well. So the, the fact is... If Libby Schaff was saying, we don't want a football team here, well, she's already said, essentially, we don't want a baseball stadium here because it's going to cost too much money. I mean, we put the bill here in Las Vegas largely for the Raiders to play, and they have a glorious stadium. It looks like a giant Roomba, if you know what I mean. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, those things that vacuum your floor, right? And they say, oh, it's the Death Star. It's not the Death Star. Death Star my ass. No, it looks like a giant <laughs> robot that you could see from 20 miles away. But the fact is we did a phenomenal job our, uh, with our taxpayer money, of course. And God knows we got to do that. That's but true. the fact is they have a nice home, but they have turf. And I want to see grass. I want to see dirt. I want to see a cloud of dust. Whatever happened to three yards in a cloud of dust? Uh, it's gone forever. You won't see it anymore. 
But football. You know what they, have, right? they have smoke. You've heard this one, right? No, no, no. Please tell me. Enlighten me. So that's when if a, if a receiver catches a ball and he drags his toe and it, it gives up like some rubbers. Oh, the little pellets from the, from the turf come yes. up behind yeah, his shoe. Smoke. You can see the smoke. Get out of yeah, here with yeah. that. No, no, no. Um, that's, what it, that's what it is today. And it's all about money. It's all about the, the, the glamour and the spectacle of putting on a big show. But here we yes. are. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, all right, so everybody, big welcome back to everybody listening in on our uh, CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates, also watching on Hotel Television. We're here with Dwight Hicks, two-time Super Bowl champion from the San Francisco 49ers, and an all-pro, a pro bowler. He's an actor. He's all kinds of stuff. This guy's kind of done it all, but let's, we're going to get to that in the next segment, all the off-the-field stuff. I want to ask you a question about take the football season. We start out, it's warm, it's hot. They've got the fans with the mist blowing. And then we get to the cold weather. Would you be, be behind the idea that the Super Bowl should be a continuation of the season in the elements? Maybe we'll go, I don't know, from where it stands. Maybe it's, you know, 40, 30 degrees. Let's go to, I don't know, let's go to Cleveland. Let's go to Buffalo. Let's have a Super Bowl. <laughs> Let's have it in the blizzard of the mayhem. What do you think? <laughs> well, I, I think I think in that respect, you have the two best teams, one from the AFC, one from the NFC. I wouldn't want the weather to be uh, an element that sways the game one way or another. I want it oh. to be perfect conditions. I want it to be perfect conditions. Okay. And the best team win. Because say a team like Buffalo, say they're used to that inclement weather. And you play, they play, say, uh, Dallas. And if Dallas didn't have their stadium, right? So they would be playing in the winter, you know, in the tundra. Or Green Bay. Let's take Green Bay in the tundra, okay? So uh, they play some team that is a warm climate team. And they're not used to it. Um, one team has an advantage because they've played in it all year long. I'd rather see perfect conditions and let the best team win. Okay. okay. Because the, the because the referees, they're going to add enough drama as it, as it is. You didn't we you know want to have a perfect playing field. To play. Okay. So, yeah. So, the example, I think a perfect example of what you're referring to would be, we'll, we'll go back to maybe your Super Bowl 16, right? Where you had... Yes. Kenny Anderson and the Cincinnati Bengals hosting Dan Fouts and the San Diego Chargers. Chargers go into a frigid cold game in Cincinnati. I remember this when I was a kid. Yeah. And San Diego was clearly the better team. Yes. But because they went into the cold weather, they weren't necessarily used to playing in the cold weather, which I think is a bunch of nonsense anyway. <laughs> but still, you got to play in the snow and crap. Okay. But the fact is, I, I believe if they were in a neutral field, that San Diego probably would have beat Kenny Anderson and the Cincinnati Bengals. I think that's a fair statement. And your team could have played the Chargers earlier, maybe not to a 49-26 disaster like in 1994. Uh, but still, <laughs> I mean, it, it would have been a fun game, wouldn't it? Right. Well, I, I think that all teams should be able to play in any weather because that's part of the nostalgia. That's part of... Uh, home field advantage. I used to love to go into away stadiums, whether it's indoors, outdoors, bad weather, nice weather, because I wanted to be booed. I was like, yeah, boo me, because you're not going to be cheering much at all today. Uh, <laughs> but that was me. Uh, but I, I just felt that, yeah, you put those two teams, Cincinnati and San Diego, on neutral fields, uh, maybe... San Diego comes out on top. That was the NFC or AFC championship game. However, for the Super Bowl, I think it should be played on a neutral site in the best weather because now the best team will be able to present them, will come out victorious. Okay, so and let's there's, let's And there's no thought. excuses. There's no excuses. Okay. Okay, well, let's keep that thought for just a minute. We've got a couple minutes left in the segment. Let's just say... It happens to be 
the Orange Bowl. So you're playing in the Orange Bowl in a Super Bowl, right? So you're in Miami. And so guess what? Now you've got a sloppy field. Yet it's the Super Bowl and it's the perfect weather. But guess what? Mother Nature didn't cooperate. Now you've got a game in the slop. Yet you still have two teams that are equal. They have to deal with the elements equally. Agree or disagree? I agree with that. Okay. I agree with that because it's the same playing field. And this is just happens to be inclement weather, but it's outdoors. It's Thank outdoors. you. You have just made my point, Mr. Hicks, because <laughs> the fact is, I don't care if they're playing in the blizzard. You still have two teams that do what? They've got to perform the same way. Yes. And so that's how I look at it. <laughs> but nonetheless, I want to see it progress into the regular season, the natural progression of the season. That's just me personally. There's a lot of guys that think the same thing. They had to revolve, revolve the Super Bowl just like they do with all-star games and all this other stuff. And play on every, on every, in every city. Every city should have a chance to watch a Super Bowl. I think uh, that's fair. It's, you, it's you, reasonable. You've got a point. you got a point. I, I've got a point. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. And, but and listen, to me, to, but to me as a player, uh, I, I would like for the Super Bowl to see who is the best team, have the best conditions, and uh, see who comes out on top. No excuses. Not. Yeah, I, I got I, you. I got you. I, I, I understand that you're a purist, Sal. I understand. I know. That. I'm, I'm uh, that way even in baseball. I, I live this way. I can't. I can't help myself. And and I piss a lot of people off. Because of it, because I know in our last 30 seconds, as a former pitcher, I know there are certain stadiums, certain groundskeepers, they'll keep the grass a little bit higher versus a little bit lower for the ball to roll slower or faster. We know these things happen from the ground crew side. So there are home field advantages too. tell you what, when we come back, we're going to step away from football and see what's going on in Dwight Hicks's life beyond that. See what he's done off the field quite a bit, folks. Don't go anywhere. Lots more to come here on the circus. You don't sit behind a desk every day to earn a living. You're out and about making it happen. And sometimes you get a little bit behind on your paperwork, you know, like bookkeeping and paying your taxes. It's easy to get behind on paying your taxes. It happens to the best of us. And you know what happens next. The big bad IRS comes knocking on your door. And when that happens, you need to call the good old boys at the tax doctor. Let them do what they do best. Deal and negotiate with the IRS so you pay the lowest you can in back taxes that the law allows. We are a 100% U.S.-based company, and we've saved our clients millions over the years in back taxes. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, call my friends right now at the tax doctor and learn more. 800-989-1694. 800-989-1694. 800-989-1694. That's 800-989-1694. Nobody wants to get ripped off, broken into, or robbed, but nobody wants to pay a lot of money to have their home protected either. I've got an offer to tell you about to provide home security for your home for less than a dollar a day. For real, with no installation or equipment charges. And this is from a company rated number one by a leading consumer research company. According to the facts, most of you won't even call unless there's a burglary in your neighborhood or something bad happened. So let's give you a reason. Save money. For less than a dollar a day with no other costs, you can get your home secured. Plus, get a lifetime equipment replacement warranty. You need protection for your home. Call the Home Security Hotline right now. 800-361-3491. 800-361-3491. 800-361-3491. Again, that's 800-361-3491. So, you want to be in show business. Do people tell you that you're really funny, you have a great personality, and you should have your own talk show? Many of us have been told that, but we don't know how to get started. 
It's easier than you think. Let the pros at Cali Vegas give you a free talent evaluation. Call 949 445 1119 and learn how quickly you can create, produce, and host your very own talk show. Imagine not having to sit in traffic every day, commuting back and forth to the same old boring job. Get started in television or radio today with your free talent evaluation from Cali Vegas. Call 949 445 1119 or visit them online at calivegas.com. Make your dream come true today and create your new career and learn how to become a television or radio star with the help of Cali Vegas. 949 445 1119. Call now. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Cell, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV mobile studio. That's AAMP TV. Folks, make sure you check out the SportsCircus.com for upcoming guests, our prior guests, our recorded shows, which are our podcasts. They're available on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify. Also, you can click on our NBC or CM or CBS logos, or even CNBC. Click on those; it'll give you to the recorded page, the recorded show page. There's I don't know, 1,200 shows there. Go ahead and click on any one of them, match them up to the featured guest page, just like for today's show with Dwight Hicks, two-time Super Bowl champion for the 49ers. And go ahead and pick your favorite episodes, or if you want to go on a binge for, I don't know, about maybe two months, and you can listen to shows <laughs> literally for every day, for every hour for a couple straight months. Either way, folks, you'll be entertained by the Sports Circus. And also make sure to check out our partners, College of Southern Nevada, CSN coyotes.com for the College of Southern Nevada Athletics. Make sure you check them out. Great ball players have come out of there. Guys like Bryce Harper, for, in fact, played at the College of Southern Nevada Athletics. Make sure you check them out. CSNCoyotes.com. All right. And welcome back to everybody everywhere here with Dwight Hicks again. And Dwight, let's get past the football. Look, we could do football for quite some time. By the way, a big hello to Tyrone Poole, who's watching us over in Atlanta. Yes, two-time Super Bowl champion from the Patriots. Yes. Yes. Ty, how you doing, brother? Right. Welcome to the club, two-time <laughs> Super Bowl champion. Right. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have any of those trophies, but then again, I've got two fountains behind me, right? Let's see if, <laughs> if I can – that's right. I, it's hard to find them. Uh, here's one over here, and then there's one right over here. Okay, I got two fountains. You got two trophies, whatever. All right, so outside of the football world, you spent some time, and you still are, I, I would imagine, doing a little bit of work on television and film. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I started acting, geez, over 25 years ago, and I'm kind of semi-retired now, but I've done theater and film as well, commercials. Uh, and voiceovers. Actually, I got an Emmy for a voiceover I did for the 49ers, a uh, 49er project called The Faithful. So, um, yeah, I, I found the entertainment industry. I just, playing football is part of it, and I just went to a different segment uh, as I got older when I could, the body couldn't uh, allow me to play anymore, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So uh, I found theater and acting. Uh, really enjoy it. Okay, so you're semi-retired. It's not like being a, a semi-pro, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, I played semi-pro football. So are you a semi-pro actor? No, that's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> when, you're, when you're on stage, trust me, it's nothing semi-pro about it. It's the real deal. And you have to be on or you will be revealed. So, um... Uh, I, I enjoy it. I, I, I found that uh, the first film I did was Jack with uh, Francis Ford Coppola, um, uh, Robin Williams, Fran Drescher, Bill Cosby, Diana Lane. And um, oh, wow, this is pretty cool. And then the second film I did was The Rock, filming in San Francisco. 
with Sean Connery, Nicolas Cage, Ed Harris. It's a great film. Uh, yeah, and John Forsythe. And I saw John Forsythe and uh, Sean Connery do this scene that I wasn't in. I was watching the monitor. And Michael Bay went in to give them some uh, direction. And uh, I never went to my uh, uh, my trailer because I was I wanted to learn. I thought it was fascinating, the lighting. So many things going on, and I was just fascinated. And so uh, he came back from telling them, giving them some direction, and he looked at me and he says, I got to do everything. Oh, Dwight, I want you in this scene. And he puts me in the scene. But before I was in the scene, I was watching this monitor of, um, Forsyth and Connery, and these are just words on a page, but they were so engaging in the way and the what they were doing that it just drew me in. And I didn't quite know what it was, but it was acting, but I didn't know that it was a skill. And that showed me that there was a skill to it. And I said, I want to be able to do that. Just like as another athlete to look at another athlete and said, well, there's a skill to playing that position. And I want to learn that. Well, there's a skill to acting. And I wanted to get better because I recognized it, number one. And then once I recognized that, yeah, I want to be able to do that. And I have. So the time and preparation, I mean, look, I've seen that movie probably 50 times. I, I could almost recite it almost word by word, <laughs> line by line. It's ridiculous. I love the film. But – the preparation, it's kind of like when you're practicing, right? So <clears throat> you you practice like you play. And I would imagine even the same thing when reciting lines. It's the same idea, right? So you're practicing Absolutely. how you want to play. Absolutely. You Well, first you have to, before you can put any color or uh, nuance into what you're saying, you have to learn the lines. If you don't know the lines, there's really no way that you could add organic emotion to what you're saying. And that's what it is. Uh, you're saying these lines, repeating them over and over and over then until it becomes second nature. Then once you have that, now you go back and you say, well, why am I saying this now? So you have to give your character some history because we all have history, right? As a human being, we have history from when we were you know, a, a little boy till, till now. And all those experiences You've learned, you've remembered, some good, some not so good, but it gives you a history. So when someone says something to you, even though they're saying it for the first time to you, depending on what your history is, what, what, what experiences you have, it affects you. So it's not so much what you're saying all the time, it's how you respond, how it makes you feel. And that is that. By the way, folks, welcome back to everybody just tuning in right here on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates here with two-time Super Bowl champion from the San Francisco 49ers, Dwight Hicks. So, Dwight, as an actor, on film, you have one set of skills, but when you're on stage, and Tyrone Poole, who's with me a couple of times a week, Tyrone does a lot of stage work. Have you done the stage work? And I asked because he tells me that it's remarkably difficult because, buddy, you're on all eyes are on you, and you can't really have a do-over because you're out there. Have you done stage work? Absolutely, I have. And what comes out of your mouth, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, you have to keep going. And that's one <laughs> thing I learned when I first, before I got on stage. It's you. Do, there is no do-over. It's like playing on the football field. You can't run down and uh, say you're running an out, and you. Don't quite make the cut the way you want to. Could you please really stop and let me do that again? No. <laughs> it is what it is. If you slip We're going and fall, you slip and fall. All right. So but. theater, yeah, there, there's no safety net, so to speak. And okay. uh, that's why you you there's so much rehearsal. And even when there's rehearsal, there might be a mix-up. But if you don't show that you're lost or mixed up, the audience will never know. So you always keep going. You keep going. And yeah, the stage is the real deal. So Tyrone, if you're doing stage and you listen to me, hats off to you, brother. Hats off to you. Right. Yeah, that's hard stuff. That's hard. I mean, look, for what we're doing here, it's just a regular dialogue. It's just a couple of guys talking. 
But you know, the funny thing is when people will, they'll tune into their favorite podcast and they'll say, well, wow, that sounds really good. You know why? Because they fixed it in the mix. Here we <laughs> just take the, Dwight, we take the whole file. I don't care if I trip over my tongue. I do it five, six, seven, ten 10 times a show. It doesn't matter. My concern meter is on zero, but people need to know that it's legit. It's not scripted. No, it's out there. And I think that's the cool part about it. It's the realism that, look, what we're doing is having a regular dialogue. And if you're calling a game, people make mistakes. Just try not to say the bad words so the FCC doesn't you know, fine you, I don't know, $100,000 or something to that effect. Show me the money! <laughs> right. Because <laughs> well, that gets way, a little expensive. If, if it would come out of your paycheck, yeah, you, those, those words will be few and far between. If at all. You got that right. Hey, listen, we've got a few minutes left in the segment here. And if there's anything that you're working on, whether you're working on a film, a, a television series, a speaking engagement, a book, whatever, whatever, go ahead and take a couple of minutes to talk about whatever is important that you're working on or maybe even a cause that you're behind. Well, I'm uh, just working, auditioning, and trying to hone my skills when I'm not doing anything right now. But I'm also working with this advisory board for uh, this company called Preserve. And they teach inmates uh, for prison reform. They teach inmates how to program computers and things of that nature and, and write uh, data uh, for a computer and then computers and then also place them in jobs. So when you talk about prison reform, this is a good way to reform some of the people, uh, the inmates that have uh, done something wrong and they want to get their life on track. We go in and we teach them this craft so they have something so when they get out and uh, uh, to the world and they serve their time, they can be productive citizens. They have something they can hang their hat on. And this is what I'm working with and doing with this company because either you're a part of the process and part of the solution or part of the problem. And I think this is a good way to uh, give back my time and to help these people that need a second chance. Oh, that's a great cause. You know, recently, we we did a show with a, a baseball player, uh, Andy Van Slyke, and Andy has something like that over in St. Louis, but for the construction business, for mm -hmm. remodeling homes, et cetera, et cetera. I love to hear these kind of stories because you're teaching them, this organization is teaching them how to code write, yes. how to really have value. And Michael, our engineer, knows a little bit about the computer side. Michael, what do you think about what Dwight just said for the organization helping people get back out into the real world. I think it's uh, I think it sounds great. It's um, you know a lot of a lot of these type of programs focus really heavily on uh, blue collar stuff and outdoor stuff, and the reality is a lot of people just aren't suited to that. So it's it's mm -hmm. cool to see that uh, it's cool to see it happening for uh, more white collar stuff as well. Yeah. Well, the 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 uh, this is for blue collar uh, applicants or inmates because, because well, I guess I, I they're, guess they're, I'd... they're they're teaching they're teaching not only the inmates they're teaching some children of inmates to write code as well and placing them in jobs. So you know we're in this ever changing world, right? So some of these kids will be more apt to, oh, I could write code for computer. Wow, that's great. I don't, I want to do that. So. Yeah, I guess blue I and white collar is the wrong word for it. I guess I'm, I guess I just mean more, uh, more outside of the jobs that are are that are typically used in these kind of reform programs. It's it's good. Yes. Right, I think that's fantastic. Tell you what, Dwight, we're out of time. Thanks for joining us here on the circus today. That would be Dwight Hicks. Two-time Super Bowl champion from the San Francisco 49ers, all-pro, Pro Bowl safety actor. He's done it everything. Thanks for joining us today, Dwight. Well, you're welcome, Sal and Michael. Thank you, too. Uh, I appreciate your time and spend some time with you. Good luck with your show, and I'll talk to you soon. And that'll do it for the circus today. I'm your ringmaster, Sal. We'll see you next time right here on your favorite station. Until then. Notice is to all timeshare owners who don't need or want their timeshares anymore. Call us now and we'll legally help you get out of your timeshare contract forever. Thousands of owners who are now not using them cancel their timeshare contracts every day. Now it's your turn. 
If you're tired of paying your monthly timeshare maintenance fees, call us. Our legal team will fight for you so you can stop paying for a timeshare you don't want and save your money. If you've tried on your own or with another company to cancel your timeshare, don't give up. At the Timeshare Helpline, we can help you get out of your timeshare contract forever and never make a payment again. How great would that be? Call the Timeshare Defense Attorneys right now for immediate help. 800-824-5131. 800-824-5131. That's 800-824-51. KCAA Loma Linda, your CNBC news station where your business comes first.